Well, welcome everyone to this week's edition of The Week in Real Estate. And I can report that most of the nation experienced good growth in median house prices over the last year. Now that is according to Domain's house price uh, index for the March 2020 quarter. Now year on year, median house prices were up in Sydney and Melbourne. They were both up 13% and Hobart was up nine, Canberra up four, Brizzy up two, Adelaide was up one. No mention at all of WA. Now for the combined capital cities, well they were up 9% for the year and 2% for the March quarter. Now in the majority of regional areas, the best performing LGAs in each state, well let's start with New South Wales. Murray River, it was up 22%. In Vic, down the Great Ocean Road, Colac Otway, that was up 18%. Queensland Isaac was up 34%. SA, Yankalilla, up 11%. WA, Caratha, it was up a whopping 29%. And Tassie Down, well, rather Tassie in Georgetown, not shabby at all, an impressive growth rate of 27%. Now the ACCC, well, it's jumped in and suggested that borrowers should switch lenders if they want to achieve lower interest rates. The uh, ACCC suggested that the banks well, again, no surprise here. We're primarily concerned with uh, maintaining their profit levels ahead of reducing mortgage rates in line with the RBA cash rate cuts. And I mean, that's been going on really since the GFC of 2007-2008 when RBA would drop it, the official cash rates, but the banks wouldn't respond in the same way. Now, the home loan price inquiry indicated that the banks were trying to drop their profitability during a period of low interest rates. And that, look, the, the big four banks benefited from a sustained decrease in their funding costs in 2019. Now, that inquiry found that home loan pricing practices, well, they do make it difficult for consumers to compare different mortgage products, even despite we've had comparison rates for quite a few years. But I'd have to say even a small reduction in interest rates could save thousands of dollars over the life of a mortgage. So folks, you know what you need to do? Get on the phone, get on the email, and contact your mortgage broker, broker and let them do the running around and see what they can achieve for you. Could save you tens of thousands over the journey. Now, question for you, how are you coping with the new norm of working from home? So a survey conducted by market researchers, McCrindle and Sint, found that 78% of Australians think working from home is going to become the new normal. And although they actually think they're gonna have a significant impact on real estate, I'd question that. So of the 1,015 people surveyed in March, 76% said, well, they'd stay longer with their employer if they were offered more remote or flexible working options. Now, demographer, of that firm, Mark McCrindle. Well, he says that experiences could influence how people choose their next home. What they're finding is increasing preferences for, say, flexible workspaces, uh, a potential rethink of shrinking dwelling sizes, and a growing reliance on shared spaces. Now, McCrindle, what he also said was the extent to which working arrangements had lasted and will last means that they will be deeply entrenched in people's psyche and therefore, that's gonna weigh in on people's home buying decisions and, and choices. So as people turn to working from home uh, apartments, well, they're gonna to need to be redesigned. And that's according to some of Australia's leading architects. Now, some of the elements which they reckon will likely influence future designs, uh, access to fresh air, uh, sunshine, outdoor space. I mean, for example, a balcony, I mean, we could go out and enjoy a nice cup of coffee two-storey apartments, well, they reckon they become much more fashionable because the different floors will afford uh, residents more opportunities to have uh, their own space and privacy when they're in the apartment together. Perhaps even a bit like a Soho, I'd reckon. Now, Paul uh, Boljevich, and I please, I hope I've spelled, uh, pronounced that correctly, Paul, of PBD Architects. Well, he says that people now want an extra bedroom they can turn to, uh, say, into a study or as a parent's retreat away from the kids but they don't want a desk in a, you know, in a gloomy dark corner. Now to round out this week, I can tell you that Victoria remains the best performing economy, but it now shares top spot with Tassie. Now that's according to the latest ComSec State of the States report. Now Vic has been on top 
for quite some time now. It's at the top position in the economic rankings, either on its own outright or shared it for eight quarters uh, quarterly surveys. I mean, that's outstanding. Tassie took out the top ranking in population growth and dwelling starts. And the last time Tassie was ranked number one in any criteria was October 2009. Now, I know this is not a measure, but uh, currently Tassie also leads the way with new vehicle registrations. Now, the ACT has been the best in terms of the unemployment numbers at a really, really uh, solid number at 3% unemployment. And that's an 11 year low, but it's also number one in the slot for home loans, up 36% on the 10 year average. WA, well, it was the only state where construction spending did not contract in the December quarter. And I'm going to bring in my final uh, quote of the week. Uh, and this is going to go to Domain Senior Research Analyst Nicola Powell. And she said, in the short term, it's likely that we will see price eases from these record highs. But we have to remember that this is short term. This is a government imposed business shutdown. And once that virus is contained, prices are likely to rebound. So folks, in summary, don't throw the, the baby out with the bathwater. Have a great weekend. It's pretty cold. I've got my jacket on here in Melbourne. Stay well. Phil Robertson of Philip Robertson Property saying bye for now.